This tutorial will explain how to use the Nanslo remote titration apparatus. When you first log on to the system, you will see a control panel that has instrument controls on the left and video controls on the right. You may have to scroll down, but there's a voice conference button at the bottom of the screen, and clicking it will give you information for how to join the voice conference so you can talk to the lab technicians who are in the lab and your lab partners if you have any. You merely enter this link into a browser, and when the web page opens, uh, you will be able to either use your telephone or your microphone and speakers on your computer to join the voice conference. Once you're in the voice conference, you will need to take control of the interface. Only one student can have control at a time. Right-clicking here and requesting control of the VI will either get you control or will put you in a queue. Once you have control, you can control all of the buttons on the interface. At the top of the screen on the left, you see the sample choices. These five buttons correspond to the five samples that you see in the video panel. And clicking on them will move the probe assembly to one or more of the samples. You can zoom in with the preset buttons. For example, this is the rinse beaker, and this is the one that you'll want to use to rinse off the probe assembly in between measurements. So when you change to a different sample uh, and take your measurements, you want to change back to the rinse beaker and dip it in there just to rinse it off before you go on to the next sample. Let's zoom back out so we can see the whole process. You can also, of course, pan, tilt, and zoom the camera in any way that you need to. What you see on the screen on the left side is a red tank that feeds into a burette and then some volume addition controls where you can add volume to the selected sample. The information about the selected sample is shown here, including its volume, pH, and its current temperature. This is a notification uh, box that will give you messages when necessary, depending on what, you, what buttons you click. On the right side, you see a blue tank that feeds into a, another burette and from there into the selected sample. And you can see that you have 50 mils of each of these solutions available to you, and that's all you have. It could be less or more depending on what lab procedure you're doing, but it's preset before you start the lab. But once you run out, however much you happen to start with, that's all you'll have, so you won't be able to get any more. And the information for each of these tanks is shown underneath them. Before you can add to a sample, you'll need to fill the burettes, but we don't want to add to the rinse sample. So we're going to go ahead and change to sample B and see how that works. So when you click on a selection, you can see that the probe assembly will raise up and move over and then down into the next sample. Notice that some of the controls are grayed out because we don't want you adding liquid all over the countertop. But once the probe assembly has been replaced into a sample, those controls will become available again. Let's zoom in on the sample that we've selected so that we can kind of see what's going on. You can see these two nozzles. These correspond to the two burettes, basically, um, that you see on the screen. So one of them will add solution from tank A, and the other one will add from tank B. When we refill the burette, or fill it for the first time, it will fill up to its maximum volume of 50 mils. Since we only had 50 mils, this tank is now empty. But if you had more, you might be able to refill your burette multiple times. Once you've refilled or filled both burettes, you're able to add volume from either one of them into the selected sample. 
and we can see here that our current volume is 200 mils and it's an acetic acid sample and here's the pH and the temperature. We can select a specific volume um, that we want to add by changing it here and clicking the add button. We can type directly into the box uh, and click the add button or we can just add one drop. So the add button adds the volume to add amount that we've selected and the one drop button just adds a drop. So as you add the volume you can um, see that the liquid gets added if you zoom in close enough. Um, sometimes adding one drop is kind of difficult to see. But if we zoom in so that's, that's such a small amount, it's really hard to see. But if we add a larger volume, then you can actually see the volume uh, go into, the solution go into the beaker. And notice that the um, pH changes and the volume changes as we're adding solutions. You'll eventually want to um, graph this information so that you can use it in your lab procedure. So um, in order to do that you'll need to go over to the graph tab. So we'll scroll back up and click on graphs. And uh, you see here there are four graphs. Uh, pH 1 and temp 1 correspond to tank 1. And pH graph 2 and temp graph 2 correspond to tank number two. So they're independent of each other, uh, but the pH and temperature graph uh, for each tank uh, are synchronized. So if we add a point to pH and temp graph one, we don't really see anything. We saw that the graph changed, but we don't really see anything because it's just a single point. So let's add some more volume from tank one, or from burette one rather, and we'll want to wait until the pH and temperature stabilize and we can see those here on the screen as well and once those values have stopped changing we can add that data point and now we see a graph of two data points illustrating what we've done so far and notice that temp graph 1 updated at the same time as pH graph 1 because they're tied together they come from the same data set If we add another amount of solution and then wait for it to stabilize and then add the data point, now we have three data points on our graph, on both graphs, pH and temperature graph. But notice that pH graph 2 and temp graph 2 did not change because we haven't added any data points to them. So we can add a data point again we don't see anything so let's go add a few more data points so we'll add one drop from burette 2 and add that data point and now we have a two point graph once again for both the temperature and the pH you can manipulate these graphs by using these controls at the bottom right corner of the graph itself. So clicking here gives you access to several choices, but these are the two most useful. You can zoom out and see the entire graph scaled to whatever the range it currently has, or you can use this button to select a particular portion of the graph to inspect more closely. You can always zoom back out to see the whole graph. If you enable the cursor, that will allow you to find the specific data for each point on the graph. So we can move the cursor. We only have three points in this particular graph, but we can move it to the points and we can see exactly the location of those points. If we had a lot of points on this graph, of course, this would be a lot more useful. You can export the graph image and the graph data to a clipboard by clicking this button 
and then pasting whichever one you have exported into a document or a spreadsheet. Since we had graph image selected, we've exported the graph image to the clipboard on our computer. And now if we open up a Word document, we can select edit and paste and the graph will be pasted into our Word document. And then we can use that in a lab report or something. If we go back and instead select graph data and click export to clipboard, now we can select a spreadsheet and again edit and paste and now we see the data from the spreadsheet or from the graph is pasted into the spreadsheet. And we can use that to manipulate the data in any way that we need to for our post analysis. Uh, again, we've only got a few points here, but you get the idea. And those are the basic controls for the Nanslow remote titration apparatus.